Look at a map of the middle of the country right now. Look at the flat stretch from South Dakota down through Texas. It looks empty, just tan and green blocks, long roads, few curves. You can drive for hours and barely notice hills. But under that flat land sits one of the largest water stores on Earth. People turn on their kitchen sink and never think about it. Yet the water comes from a single hidden source. That is the mystery. How can so many towns, farms, and cities pull water from the same place day after day for decades and the ground never looks wet? The answer is not pipes or policy. The answer is the land itself. Now we know exactly why. If you live in western Kansas or the Texas Panhandle, your tap water likely comes from deep underground. Same for parts of Nebraska, Colorado, and Oklahoma. You cannot see this water. You cannot hear it. But it feeds homes, schools, and hospitals. It also feeds fields so wide they look like oceans from the air. This water store is called the Ogallala Aquifer. It stretches under eight states. It covers about 175,000 square miles, which is bigger than California. That scale matters. It explains everything. Here are fast facts to lock you in early. This aquifer supplies drinking water to most people living above it. About four out of five residents inside its boundary rely on it for daily use. Nationwide, about half of all tap water comes from underground sources like this. This one is the biggest single piece. It also feeds a huge part of the country's food. It grows about 20% of all the grain in the United States. Without this hidden water, the middle of the country would look like a desert. Scientists found the water goes down as deep as 1,000 feet in some spots. That is like stacking 200 cars on top of each other. If you poured all that water on the surface, it would cover the entire United States in a foot and a half of water. That is enough to submerge every house and street from New York to California. This water is also incredibly old. It has been sitting there for millions of years. This is not rain from last week. This is water that fell before humans even existed. The mystery for a long time was how it got there and why it stays there. For decades, nobody could figure out why this exact spot held so much liquid. Now we know exactly why this happens. Geography determined everything. If you drive through here today, you see a landscape that seems boring. It is flat and predictable. But that flatness is a mask. Under the soil is a giant geological sponge. To understand how it formed, you have to look west. Look at the Rocky Mountains. Millions of years ago, those mountains were rising up. As they rose, the wind and rain began to tear them down. This is the first law of the land. What goes up must come down. The mountains were made of hard rock, but weather is stronger than stone over time. Huge rivers flowed east off the young Rockies. These rivers were thick with sand and gravel and silt. They were carrying the mountains away piece by piece. They dumped all that material across the Great Plains. Imagine a dump truck the size of a state pouring sand for five million years. That is what happened. This layer of sand and gravel got very thick. In some places, it is hundreds of feet deep. This is not like the hard rock you find in the Appalachian Mountains out east. This is loose, porous material. Because the sand and gravel are loose, they have tiny spaces between every grain. When rain fell or rivers flowed over it, the water didn't just run off, it sank. It filled those tiny holes between the sand. This is how the giant sponge was made. It took millions of years to fill. Scientists used to think this was an ongoing process. They thought the water was constantly being replaced by new rain. But they were wrong. The breakthrough came when geologists started taking core samples. They drilled deep into the earth. They pulled out long tubes of rock and sand. They looked at the layers like a book. They found that the bottom of the aquifer is made of hard, solid rock like granite. This hard floor acts like a bowl, 
It stops the water from sinking any deeper into the earth. It traps it right where we can reach it. In the 1980s, teams from the University of Nebraska and Texas Tech began mapping the shape of this bowl. They found it wasn't a smooth floor. It had ridges and valleys, just like the surface. This explained why some towns had plenty of water, while others ran dry just 10 miles away. The geology under your feet was picking winners and losers before the first fence was ever built. Then came the investigation into the water itself. Geologists wanted to know how old the water really was. They used a method called radioactive dating. This measures how much certain elements have broken down over time. It works like a geological clock. They tested the water from deep wells. The results were a shock. Most of the water in the Ogallala is more than 10,000 years old. Some of it fell as rain five million years ago. That was during the Pliocene age, long before the first woolly mammoth ever walked across the plains. This water is what scientists call fossil water. It is a relic of a different time. Back then, the climate was much wetter. The rivers coming off the Rockies were massive. They were like the Mississippi today. They filled the sand sponge to the brim. But then the climate changed. The mountains got taller and blocked the rain clouds. The rivers dried up or moved. The water stayed trapped in the sand. This is a critical point for anyone living there today. The water we are using is a gift from a world that doesn't exist anymore. It is not a bank account where you can put more money in. It is a vault that was filled once and then locked. For a long time, the public didn't want to believe this. People wanted to think that every time it rained, the aquifer was refilling. But the math didn't add up. The ground in the high plains is mostly clay and silt on top. Water doesn't move through it quickly. Scientists measured the refill rate. They found that in most places, only about half an inch of rain reaches the aquifer each year. That is thinner than a penny, but we are pumping it out much faster than that. In some parts of Texas and Kansas, the water level is dropping by two feet every year. That is 50 times faster than the rain can replace it. This is why the wells are going dry. It is not because of bad management or personal failure. It is because the math of the land is fixed. The evidence stack is complete. We have the smoking gun. Geologists found the same rock minerals in the Kansas aquifer that only exist in the peaks of the Rockies. This proves the water store was built by the destruction of those mountains. They also found that the water contains ancient air bubbles from thousands of years ago. These bubbles tell us the temperature of the air when the water fell. It was much colder and wetter then. The debate is over. We are using water that took millions of years to gather. We are using it in a single human lifetime. This reality creates a lot of stress for people. If you live in a town that depends on this water, you feel the weight of it. You see the pivots in the fields turning all summer. You hear the hum of the pumps. You know the water is going down. It is easy to feel like something went wrong. But understanding the geology changes that feeling. This outcome was set by forces that happened 5 million years ago. The land provided a massive resource, and humans did what humans do. They used it to build a civilization in a place where one shouldn't exist. The rise of the High Plains was a geographic miracle. The decline is a geographic reality. Geography is permanent. It sets the rules before we even show up. The land determined that this would be a high production farming zone for about 100 years. It gave us the sand. It gave us the granite bowl to hold the water. And it gave us the Rockies to fill it up. But it also gave us a very slow refill rate. You can't argue with a rock. You can't negotiate with a 1,000 foot deep layer of gravel. 
Knowing this brings a kind of peace. It removes the blame. Your region is what it is because of the Earth's history. These mountains were here before us, and the sand was laid down by rivers that vanished before our ancestors arrived. The settlement of the American West was shaped by these hidden layers. Cities like Lubbock or Garden City or Amarillo exist exactly where they do because the water was shallow enough to reach. The economy of the entire middle of the country was built on a geological fluke. Now that the fluke is running out, the land is just returning to its natural state. The mystery of why the ground stays dry while the taps stay on is solved. The water is a ghost of a wet past. The physics of the sand sponge are simple. We are emptying a container that doesn't have a tap to refill it. Local groups are trying to slow the fall. They are using less water. They are planting crops that don't need as much. This helps, it buys time, but it cannot change the basic fact of the geology. The Ogallala is a finite resource. Industries change and populations shift, but the underlying landscape stays constant. The geographic patterns we see today were determined by ancient forces beyond human control. This is not about human decisions. It is about physics written in stone. The case is closed. Core samples and radioactive dating prove this formation occurred through the erosion of the mountains creating the sand sponge that still controls how life and farming exist today.